in a recent video we looked at my Petter A1 stationary engine along with the Bitsa generator I built to run with it. After I'd posted the video one of my regular viewers posed the question can I use it to brew a cup of tea? I guess there's only one way to find out. So I've got myself a travel kettle and we'll do a little bit of theory first and then we'll give it a try. So for our little theory lesson, my generator uses a Lucas C40 12V dynamo, which has a maximum output of around 22 amps, and more realistically can run at around 18 amps continuous. If we multiply the current of 18 amps by the voltage of 12 volts, we get the wattage of 216 watts. My travel kettle is a 600 watt kettle, so clearly the dynamo can't provide enough power to make it boil. But my generator also contains a car battery, which is charged by the dynamo, giving the system a limited amount of reserve power. I also have an inverter fitted in the bottom of the generator to create the 240 volt supply. Inverters aren't 100% efficient, so let's assume I actually need to create an extra 5% of power. So we've got 600 watts for the kettle, plus 5%, we'll say 630 watts. If I subtract the 216 watts that I'm expecting to get from the dynamo, that leaves me with 414 watts to come from the car battery. And watts divided by volts equals current, so 414 watts divided by 12 volts gives me 34.5 amps to come from the battery. The battery itself isn't particularly powerful, it's the 35 amp hour car battery. The 35 amp hour refers to its capacity, it means that it can provide 1 amp for 35 hours, or 2 amps for 17 and a half hours. It has a maximum cranking current of 330 amps, but it's only intended to see that high current for a few seconds while you're starting the car. I'll be trying to draw 34.5 amps for several minutes, which is pretty high for that kind of battery. So it's quite likely that the battery will drop in voltage quite significantly while we're doing this test. I'm going to plug directly into the spare socket on the front of the inverter because the supply back to the socket on the front of the generator itself deliberately has a low ampage fuse so I don't inadvertently overload it. And I'm going to use one of these plug-in meters to monitor the wattage being drawn by the kettle during the test. So I'll just put a bit of water in the kettle and then we'll be more or less ready to go. So I think that's everything set up, so I think we can crank up the engine and kick the generator into life and see if we can brew our cup of tea.
So, one mug, one tea bag already inside, and pour on the boiling water. And one lovely cup of tea. Yes, perfect. Add milk to taste. Lovely. Perfect. Okay, well that all worked fairly well, albeit not without a few problems. You could probably hear the bleeping that started around one minute into heating the water. That's the low voltage warning on the inverter because the dynamo wasn't able to keep up with the power supply. Around the three minute mark the inverter started cutting out due to the low voltage, but it would immediately cut back in because with no load the voltage would jump back up to 13.5 volts and the inverter would restart. The dynamo itself got fairly warm, but nothing too serious. I've never run more than about a 14 amp load on the generator before, so the 12 volt ammeter hasn't been tested with anything higher. When I switched everything off at the end of the test, the ammeter had stuck at 18 amps. A couple of little taps made it reset to zero, but it presumably has a tight spot, so maybe the dynamo actually produced more than the indicated 18 amps that we saw on the ammeter. I don't think I'll repeat the experiment too many times, at least not without a bigger battery anyway to hold a better reserve of power. I could of course upgrade the system, but I only built it to run low power lighting when I'm exhibiting the machine, so I think I'll leave it as it is for now. I think that will do for this video. There's only so much time you can spend watching someone making a cup of tea. If you've enjoyed watching, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. There'll be plenty more vintage stuff coming soon. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a future video. Thank you.